man, first off, I ain't seen you in forever because, uh, you know, we've been on lockdown. A right. lot, of, lot of lockdown, a lot of porn going on. <laughs> a lot of porn, man. Nah, man, let me tell you something. The road on the real, real shit, on the road, I've seen the craziest stuff I've ever seen. I was doing a show in Denver. Um, I was like, I had already set up a regular gig, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And I did a hood gig on that Sunday because I figured, well, I'm already in Denver. Right. And they're like, bro, look, you're doing that mainstream white shit. Why don't you come <laughs> down and do this club? I'm like, yeah. And he said, I'll give you $500 cash. I'm like, yeah. I'll do right. it. I go there, man. It was the most hood. <laughs> it wasn't normal hood. It was like, like, like a two-gun minimum Damn. to get in hood. Where it was, was this at? It was Denver. Oh, it was Denver. It was thawed out like, Damn. yeah, like, yeah. It was on some like the old joke, like the, the person at the door, yo, what's up with you? Yo, we got to check you. And I was like, listen, lady, it was that, <laughs> it was that type of shit. And I'm, I'm doing a gig and I was, I forget the uh, AC, there was a comic in the AC on the show. We're doing a show and there was these gay dudes in the front. And I mean, they was flamboyantly gay, like half top shirt, Damn. glitter, you know. And the feature comic, I wasn't up yet. The feature comic started talking shit about them saying, what up, you gay, you know, faggot and all kind of uh, stuff. And they're like, and then when I could tell that they could fight, because the way they said it was like, listen, this thing gonna work out for you. And I was like, well, why does he keep saying it like that? And the dude kept saying shit to him. He said, first off, I'm telling you, you don't want me to come up on that stage. <laughs> and I started laughing at the fact that, you know, I could tell, for some reason I could tell mm -hmm. he could fight. And plus he was all buffed out. That was out. a real warning. Yeah, it was a warning. <laughs> it was that, that wasn't normally you don't get that warning. And then the dude's like, you ain't gonna do nothing. You ain't gonna do nothing, I wish you would come on stage. The feature act. And then he said, okay, you asked me to get it. Now you're going to get it. And when I say he beat the brakes off this dude, wow. I'm talking about he worked him like a Vietnamese family in a Levi <laughs> shop. He beat the, I mean, be, like, and, and this is a hood gig, so nobody really stopped it. Right. People are scared. They're going near the bar and like this. And I'm standing back. Well, show's over. Like, in my mind, I'm thinking show's over. And the, the dude that booked me, uh, uh, just, I could tell he he had done time. Yeah. You know, yeah, you ain't supposed to tattoo your eye. Like, <laughs> yeah. he had his, his eye was tattooed. And he said, uh, he said, um, yeah, man, well, you know, that was that dude. That, that nigga got beat up. That's not you. You still got to go up and do your 45. People paid for their money. Damn. So the, the people that were left, so I'm literally, they had to drag this dude and take him to the hospital. This is on the road. Damn, this is before you go up. This is before I go up. They, so I'm walking towards the stage, and they're dragging this dude, unconscious dude, the, the feature act, off the stage. I'm standing in puddles of blood doing the show. What? And, and the dude was like, yeah. And I went to, I was like trying to not step in the blood. I was like, this is horrible. And and then I, I said, first off, I want to let, and they didn't kick the dude out. The, the gay coalition. Yeah. The, yeah. They didn't kick them out. He sits back down after beating the shit out of this dude. Yeah. And I said, look, man, I like your half top shirt. I think it, <laughs> I like the glitter on your face. He said, see, this one gets it. Uh, Do your show. You may proceed. <laughs> and then I finished my set. And, and in fact, the dude bought his man. Uh, my At the time, this is how long ago, he bought my DVD. He said... I need to get one of those for my boyfriend. <laughs> and I said, yeah, man, you can have what you... In right. fact, why don't you take this right, T-shirt? Right, right. Whatever you, whatever you yeah. need. You, got whatever, you want this T-shirt? <laughs> right. You can have the T-shirt to wipe up the blood Damn. from the beating you just did. So Damn. it was just weird to be on the road. And then that was one of the weirdest ones other than the girl kept vomiting on the front of the stage. Ew. Yeah, the club called Stitches in Philly. Uh, yeah, throwing up while you was on the stage or uh, somebody while I was else? on the stage she was drunk and she started vomiting and I'm like you know you try to stand out the way of it and I go to you know say hey can somebody clean this up and the dude Tony and that's his real name he's like hey quit being a fucking sissy do your show <laughs> shut your mouth it's 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 puke. It's not acid. Wow. And I was like, yo, yeah, club called Stitches. Damn. And I was like, wow. So they, they, you know, let her sit there fucking all vomited out. So between the beating, Damn. the, 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 you mess with the wrong gay dude beating right. and the vomit story. And I told my friends that and they're like, really? They, he's, 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 he got didn't care. He said, people didn't care. They, when you pay $20 right. to go see a show and... That's how some people feel like, 
that ain't me. I'm right. not the one vomiting. That's you. Right. So that was the that's wild, crazy. Yeah, that's the wildest shit. You know that made, that brings me back to uh, that makes me think about New York City. New York is where I started comedy. I moved from Dallas to New York, and that's where I started comedy and producing. And, right. You know, it's so many different types of rooms out there. You can go to Harlem and you can go to Queens, Broadway Comedy Club. Right. I did all of those. Yeah. That's why I started. Yeah. yeah. Oh, dope, 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 dope. dope. There, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. That's what's yeah. up. I did a show. I remember doing a show in Queens, and it was the same thing. But they was getting they roasting the host because if you ain't funny, they ain't trying to hear all that. Yeah. Or if you roast, try to roast the wrong dude, it get hot. In there real quick. Yeah, so. I, I mean, they, I, up in Queens, they used to do shows for the Jamaican. Like, why, uh -huh. why are you a botty boy? And I'm, I'm Jamaican, so mm -hmm. I, they, I didn't, they didn't understand that I knew patois. So I would come back at them, uh, and then they was like, "Oh, we love these." <laughs> why well, he's not the botty boy? You uh, a botty swish? They call it a botty boy, a swishy man. Uh, uh, yeah. So I used to do shows in Queens. My favorite show in New York was Nails. Well, this is back. See, oh yeah, yeah I'm like Nails. See you. Nails, uh, and a, me, a comic named Talent. Talent the comic, yeah, yeah, yeah. Rob did, Stapleton, and yeah, he yeah. ran a show at LaBar Bats. In fact, that's where Russell Simmons saw me before I did Def Jam. Ah, oh, dope. So, yeah, so. so how was that meeting? That's a whole nother stuff. Now, I'm, I'm getting into your business because you got a lot of experience, man. I'm super glad to have you on, but yeah, yeah. I, I definitely want to pick your brain about that because you've been doing this for so long. And I've been watching. You said you've been doing comedy for so long. Well, I came up watching you and before, seeing damn. you just wreck it and kill. You I've know been what doing saying? it. Damn, I haven't been doing it a long time. <laughs> yeah. So to be here yeah. with you now, man, and here, man, it's, 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 it's dope. It's dope. Yeah, hey, I remember I, I was doing, I was at the Last Supper. And I was doing a tight 10 minutes. <laughs> and then uh, Judas, you know, he heckled me. Uh, he going to heckle me. Dope. You know what I'm saying? But uh, no, nah, I, um, yeah, I did the bar bats. It was, I was going there to try to get some pussy, to be real with you. <laughs> I know that's messed up. Because it would be all like the baddest chicks yeah. would be there. So I would do the show there. But if you had a good set, it was a wrap. You right. knew that. There's a very good chance you in there. Yeah, yeah, right. you would be engulfed in vagina. Right, soon. right. So uh, I, um, I did, and so I saw all these badass chicks there. So I was like, yo, I gotta really, you know how you think I gotta really kill. Right. You looking at the audience? Right. You like, scoping like, out oh, before. Right. I really gotta kill. So uh, uh, it was funny. I didn't know Russell was there, wow. and if he'd have told me there, I probably would have been more. Exactly. I'd have been like, oh shit, right. it's Russell Simmons. So no, I. Um, I did just, your thing and what he came holler at you afterwards or yeah, did I you talk to him afterwards? Because they already I already showcased. I did the it's called this is old old school. Mm -hmm. It was called the Bay Area Black Comedy Competition. Mm, that sounds super familiar. And I won the first round and the booker was there and saw me. He said, Yeah, I'm from the streets, but I'm intelligent too, and I just don't think the Def Jam crowd will get you. And I said, first off, dude. Why are you licking your lips while you're talking to another grown man the way you're doing it? Like, why are you doing this sexy? Like, yeah. yo, I ain't, I'm just letting you know where I'm Hit from. Hit you with the LL yeah, shit. Yeah, like, yeah, what did I say? <laughs> when I'm alone in my room, Oops. I'm like, dude, uh, what you doing? Right. So, but no, nah, I didn't get on the show the first, like, I didn't do that season mm. because he said, yeah, he didn't think, even though I had won the first round, he still, so I was like, I wasn't even depressed about it. I was like, I'm just gonna keep working so hard that somebody gonna see me. Right. And um, I did that show at La Barbat, and Russell asked me, why aren't you on my show? I said, Damn. you tell me. Damn. Your people saw me. Right. I'm talking about maybe a week later. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I get the call and I'm on the show, and I'm on with Paul Mooney. Oh, shit. My, my, the person that inspired me to do comedy. Yeah. It was Paul Mooney, Dick Gregory, Bill Hicks. Um, a comic named uh, Tom Rhodes, who I really liked a lot. Mm -hmm. And uh, so there was comics. And I was on the show with Paul Mooney, so that even made me go. Right. And M Mooney switched us. He was supposed to close. They made me close because I had brought like 130 people with me. Hold up. How long had you been in the game before you on stage with Paul Mooney and you got uh, 130 people behind you? Because, I mean, that's, 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 that's crazy. Um, uh, shit. Nine years. Wow, I was nine years. Because wow. when I found that's out, still I was strong. That's, yeah, that's, no, especially this before social media and all that stuff. No, bro. what that's I did crazy, was bro. when I found out, I was so excited. I got it. I walked around the street. I made flyers. Remember Kinkos? Yeah. I see. I see. Oh, oh yeah. Because y'all looking at me like <laughs> it's a throwback. No, no, it's called Kinkos. <laughs> yeah. See the people going watching this going fuck this Kinkos. Right. No, it's look what kind of sex slave shit right. you talking about? No, it's a place. And I made. I used. To, I literally pasted type and made a flyer wow. and walked around the street because it was free for the taping 
And they said, oh, you can invite who you want. Not realizing, I literally walked around the streets. Hey, I'm taping HBO. I need y'all to come out. I'm going to be there. And so I walked up to everybody I could. And I gave, so I didn't think that many people would show. And they did. Wow. So like the whole balcony. That's why when you see my Def Jam set and I get that applause, it's not because I was more famous than anybody on the show. Mm -hmm. It was more like, oh, that's the dude that gave us the free tickets. Right. So, yeah. So, wow, yeah. that's dope. And, it, and it's interesting to hear that, too, because I feel like we live in a time now where, and I've, I've been doing this 10 years, but I'm there's still, everybody's a comedian now. Yeah. So they don't, they don't have that appreciation for the grind and all that work that goes into it. They, they Instant gratification. They want to be, well, well, why not now? And they have these expectations. When I want to do this show, and I want what he has. And it's like, man, it's a whole nah, lot. Nah, exactly. It's a whole lot. Yeah, no, man. I was, it's weird. I was supposed to go up second. Or was I second or third? I'm think second or third. Mm -hmm. And Paul Mooney decided he didn't want to go up at the end. And he's Paul Mooney. So, of course, they right. were like, of course, Mr. Mooney's like, sure. uh, put the angry yellow <laughs> nigga up last. <laughs> uh, the angry yellow nigga can go up after me. Because right. I'm Paul motherfucking Mooney. <laughs> and they put him up. It was um, AJ Johnson. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, AJ uh, from uh, Fridays. I got the hookup and shit, too. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. And nah, man, and I went up on stage and I was nervous at first until I saw the other comics and I saw the crowd was, and I went, oh, okay, it's a yeah, rap. Yeah. And I got real like into my zone. And then when I came on stage, and then I used to do security. So the security people knew me. Oh, nice. And they said, yeah, you should do a kata because I used to be into all of that bullshit. Because mm -hmm. now people just shoot you. I don't know why you do all right. this movement. Right. You could be an MMA all day, but that ain't going to block a bullet. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, I mean, but I used to be into that. So I came out and I did a kata. And that threw the crowd off. And then I went into my set. And it gave me confidence, too, because they saw I really did it. I wow. Like, I did a full wow. uh, thing. And then... uh yeah, That's I had dope. A good set. Now I'm curious too, because I got I gotta know you you got a lot of experiences. Uh when did what when did you even decide comedy was for you? I mean, obviously you said you did security. What was your history and what made you decide? I, I think I'm gonna run with this comedy shit. Oh, I was a funny security guard. Gotcha. Like I didn't want to get all scratched <laughs> up and fighting people. Yeah. I mean, and you know the worst is women were the worst. Breaking up women Ooh. fighting was way worse. Cause the dudes you could kind of talk to a little bit. Right. Women like, fuck you, I'm gonna scratch your eyes out. Who you looking <laughs> at my man? And I'm like, hey. Right. But I would talk to him, make something funny. I'm gonna get you some drinks, you know what I'm saying? So I would constantly joke in this stuff. And I was also down with some real, like it was back in the day with Zulu Tribe mm -hmm. uh, and Five Percenters and stuff like that. I was around those kind of cats. So I would say really political shit, but I was being serious. Mm -hmm. But everybody was like, oh, thought it was funny. And they kept, and then I started seeing that that worked with, you know, making people cool with you. And then I started being more leaning into it. And then um, one of my friends was like, I was, I needed $50. I was so broke. Yeah. I was like, yo, I was like broke, broke, like giving blood broke. Damn. And I, I mean, a lot of blood. <laughs> I was, yeah, I'm surprised. Lightheaded like, and shit. Oh, that type shit. shit. I'm surprised shit. I'm awake <laughs> right now. I was giving so much blood. And I was giving blood, and the dude said, man, you funny as hell. You should go down to this comedy club. I took my girl to this club. I give you $50 to get up on stage. Damn. And I signed up. Uh, it was a place called Who's On First. I went up, and I ripped for mm -hmm. like two minutes. Because mm -hmm. they only give you two minutes. Wow. It's two minutes, then you're done. Two minutes is tough, too. I know. It was like yeah. two minutes. I, did, I remember the joke I did. It was so fucking bad. <laughs> I did a joke about, uh, I said that uh, uh, albinos were... Albinos, what they did was cremate them and made bottles of whiteout. Damn. I remember, <laughs> I don't know if you remember whiteout. <laughs> yeah, the yeah. fuck with the brush I and shit. I thought that was cremated albinos. Damn. And so I did a joke about that. And and um, I did a joke about that. And it was another dumb joke, the first time, right. about Godzilla fucking the Statue of Liberty. Damn. Because I thought that's the only woman that could accommodate that, that Godzilla the dick. Godzilla. And it was just stupid. But it worked. Yeah. And then the owner, and there's another dude named Peter Spello said, um, he said, man, you really should do this. Yeah. Come back next week. I'll get you free drinks and we'll give you food. Damn. And I was like, oh. Say no more. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I ain't got no food. I ain't got no money. <laughs> I came the next week. I did it again and I did it again. And then I started liking it. Then I met a whole bunch of comics I started hanging with that I really liked yeah. hanging with. Um, on and popping from there. Yeah, it was on. And it, it, like my like comics that... You know, when I started, and I got good fast because in New York, you know, you could do mm -hmm. six, seven sets a night. Oh, yeah. You know, I was, so I was doing, like, I didn't have no lady. I didn't have nobody. So mm -hmm. I was like, well, I can do, go to tonight. I start at eight. Yep. I won't be done till three. I'll go on stage everywhere. Mm -hmm. You know, so I got pretty good after a year and I had me hosting. 
at the I was hosting and I went from host to um, feature pretty fast. Dope. Then I went on the man. Road. I'm talking about a, 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 just a track record, man. You've been yeah. you've been you've been killing shit for a while, man. But throughout the, all of this time, because within my short term time of ten years doing this, I've had moments where I was like, man, I don't know about this shit. Because oh, I still out. I still you have look my back. Still, look at this. come on, man. Look, still, all you people listening, I know shit. the people can't see it. Need a host uh, laugh after dark. So don't get it twisted. Don't get it twisted. Yeah, don't get it twisted. And funny, and I watched the sets on there. <laughs> There's some people that were very funny, but yeah. you kind of smoked a few people. Yeah, I appreciate that. There's a that. couple people that there was a problem. <laughs> you were kind of a problem for yeah. So like, nah, even the chick that was hosting, like this sound like hater shit. <laughs> yeah. The chick that was hosting before, she wasn't as strong as you. Yeah. And that's, look at the producers in the back. Uh, Shang, that's enough of your bullshit. <laughs> we, uh, we like her. <laughs> nah, she was funny, but she wasn't as strong as you. Yeah. See, but when you say that people think you hate like yeah. i know when from working on some shows with comics i know who i can't fuck with yeah i know who i'm strong as like i think i'm strong as any comic exists yeah but when you see somebody's fame and yeah. you see they got that thing yeah like i'm gonna tell you who i yeah that's what i was just about to ask you who do you who do you not like to follow like who's who does uh cat cat williams was yeah up. he a beast i did the chocolate <laughs> sundays i had to follow that uh -huh. motherfucker I had to do two minutes on the fact of what Ch I did jokes about what Cat had on and how it would look horrible on me. I kind of made sure I mm. brought myself down a little bit. Right. I'm like, why? Yeah, who y'all gonna put up after next? Because I was I started complaining as a joke that I had to follow Cat because mm. he was already Cat Williams. It wasn't like he was Cat Williams coming up. Right. He was Cat. Right. And so. And, and they said, well, Shang is aggressive and he's high energy. Right. Put him up after him. Right. I'm like, you motherfucker. <laughs> right. And they put me up after him. So my first two minutes was making fun of the fact that I had to follow Cat Williams. Damn. Like, who's who next? Eddie? Y'all gonna put Eddie up next? Right, right. The fuck, you know, it's like, it was so the audience kind of sided with me. And then when I, by the time I did my first bit, yeah. everybody was like, oh, okay, cool. Right. Okay, he's funny. We got it. Wait, we, once you get him, yeah. Yeah, then yeah. it was cool. But yeah, no. I say, Cat. Is somebody you don't want to follow, uh, to me at least. Yeah. Um, Shit, I mean, I mean, Tony Roberts is hard to follow. Oh, he's a beast. He's one of the first comedians I actually opened up for. I was probably Are you serious? I was three or four months in the comedy in New York, and some janky promoter, just some doo-doo promote shows yes. in Jersey, put me on the show at some hotel. And I'm like, baby, I told my wife, baby, I'm going to do the show in Jersey. I think I may have took one of them town cars. Them town cars are expensive as hell yeah. out there. We ain't had no car. But I went out there and opened up for Tony. And I'll never forget, it, it was such a boost of my, of my confidence because after he uh, got the mic and I got off stage, I went and featured for him. He was like, man, who was this nigga y'all put up before me, man? The motherfucker's funny, man. And that was part of it. And I was like, oh, shit. I almost That's peed him. I was like, oh. That's good. And from there, I was like, man, I'm Never stop it. I was like, I'm just gonna stay on. It was the little bit of the the certification I need or confidence I needed just to continue to get, doing yeah. what I was doing. But Tony's so that was funny as hell, high hell yeah. energy. Um, comic named Two Ray. Oh out yeah, of, out of Philly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it was he was he was tough to follow because he was so smooth. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then, uh, but then after a while, I didn't give a fuck about nobody. Yeah. And because I was so deep into it, and by the time I had my kid, because it was just me and my son, mm -hmm. I was like, I can't not do well. Right. So I didn't care about none of the other I did I didn't care about none of the other comics. I said I gotta be funny. Right. Or it's back to stripping at old folks' homes. <laughs> right. And and I, I and I you know and when I was younger though I had the body. Right. Now I got right. COVID body. <laughs> My body looking man, weak. Yeah I'm looking like I'm built like a, a bar of butter. But, but I'm like a bag I'm like a bag of broken dreams now. But yeah. I'm saying then I was I was because I was in I was uh, training. I used to do all that like, you know, now somebody starts some shit with me. I just like, stop it. Don't well, hit me. Chill. Yeah, uh, but six then feet. I th yeah, then I was I was a problem. <laughs> Damn. I knew, yeah, I, I had I could go. But after a while you realize like, unless you're gonna do this shit for a living, why am I doing this? You know, yeah. like other than to show my pops I had a trophy and my arm hurts, my hands were hurt, like People don't realize, even if you're a winner in that shit, right. like the MMA, or right now it wasn't MMA, it was PKA, mm -hmm. um, full contact, you still lose. Because mm. you're, you're, you're soaking in a tub, you're hurt, right. your face hurts, everything hurts. I'm like, I don't want to do this shit. Right, right. This is dumb. I started thinking it was dumb. I'm like, nobody, like, nobody comes over to you afterwards like, man, that was a good fight. And then you say, and but you're so hurt, you're like, yeah, thank you. Right. Thank now you, I gotta thank. go heal for three yeah, days. Yeah, like, no, three days. <laughs> three Hilarious. weeks, shit. What? Shit. Oh, man, it'd be a month later, you go to get up. Ah, 
my arm. Damn. Yeah. So I mean, that's why I jokes. I'd rather get punchlines. There you go. Than punched in the face. Bam. But I still, I still you need do to put a that shit on the shirt. By the way. Yeah. Punchlines instead of punched in the face. Right. Right. Yeah. Some of the shit I've been saying on stage though. Um, I've been doing the Zoom shows. Have you done? Oh any yeah, those? yeah. I've done a couple of them. And they, at first weird. I was totally against them, but they do give you some sense of form of right. you know something that feels good. You know, it's like a oh, gateway man. drug. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah, no, it's a gateway drug. Now what's next? Right. No, I did it. I did one, man. It was so crazy, and somebody hacked into it and just stood up and started swinging their dick around. What? And it wasn't no normal <laughs> sized dick. What? It was like like if Thanos pulled his what? pants down. It was, yeah. And I'm like, why does his block have to be next to my block on the Zoom? <laughs> Look like he was coming yeah, right like, at you. Yeah, and I'm like, ain't this a bitch? <laughs> and then I keep telling people, hey, man, can y'all get this dude off it? So I start making jokes about him swinging his dick around. Damn. He didn't stop for about two minutes. He just was swinging it back and forth. What? And I was like, wow, this is... I mean, I got laughs because the people were laughing what? out of shock. And then I'm making jokes about how uncomfortable I was. And I'm talking about it was like the joke where you hear it's like it was like a baby's arm holding an apple. Damn. I, I'm like, whatever woman he would have sex with, he would kill. He would make her like a shish kebab. Damn. It was, it was, but and then they finally cut him off, and I, I was like, and they're like, hey. Then I got the light. I'm like, right. He took my his dick took all my time. Yeah, yeah. This giant dick motherfucker took all my time. Right, so, stop so, bragging. I would have been texting top yeah. bragging. Get off the fucking <laughs> Get off the thing. Right. But no, nah, I mean, I, I've been doing those since the COVID. <laughs> and, uh, you know, again, I told you, a lot yeah. of Pornhub. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So They've I'm used single, us up. So I can, I can look at Pornhub. <laughs> right. You know, it's weird when you get kicked off of Pornhub. Oh, yeah. My wife, she didn't, She we, we used to argue about that shit for a long time. I remember before, because we've been together so long. I remember my girls was high school. Damn. So we grew up together. So all the different phases of porn from, you know, cassettes and DVDs. I remember when Booty Talk was having the DVDs. Wow. Yeah, the dude would come to the bar and say, hey, man, I got the DVDs. I got Bad Boys. <laughs> I got Men in Black and Booty Talk 72. Like, oh, I was shit. like, nigga, let me get the Booty Talk. What is that, Booty Talk? <laughs> yeah. My wife would find them. This is in the house. I'll have them on the top of the cabinet or something. What is this? It's, like, it's, uh, it's just, you know. Research. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, babe, sometimes <laughs> you're at work and I need something for me. <laughs> Right. So, and so, right. but you've been married a long time. But yeah. it's it's cool that you got a wife. Like the problem I had with women, and I'm saying it to all you women. Let them know. Let them know. No, <laughs> it's just that they meet me in a comedy club. Yeah. And I met the lady I was with for a while in the comedy club. Then after a while, they're like surprised. This is actually what you do. Like, yeah. and I understand she left, and she should have left because I mean, after a while, I thought, yeah, how long would you want to wait for somebody? Not that I was like on the road fucking around. It was just, I was gone a lot. Yeah. And I and even when I was home, I would come home and do, set up like all these local gigs. Mm. So I'd be out till two in the morning, even though I wasn't doing nothing. Right. She's like, so where are you going next? Right. I could tell she started getting Frustrated with that shit, yeah, it's like, a lot. So where you at? Okay, so you, <laughs> Chicago? Okay, then Atlanta? Right. Okay. <laughs> right. And I was like, and then I started getting vindictive about shit because I was like, uh, she would start to say something. I go, you know why you don't have no receipts? Because mm. I pay for everything. Mm. And she's, you know what I'm saying? You don't know what a receipt is. You know why that car you driving? Guess what? Jokes paid for that. Right. So, you know, you don't want me to right. do this? How about this? Right. I won't go do the one-nighters. You get a job. Mm. You get a job. And then, why you throwing me under the bus? You act like you wanted to get on the bus. You yeah. Know? yeah. It's like jokes to keep you in this nice car or right. the bus, right. what you want to do. So but for some women, they see that as you just out here fucking around, you just out here having fun. It's like, because what I do is fun. It is excitement. It is giving laughs. It's still work. It's still but work. But to the outside looking in, it looks like you just out here fucking around, having right. a blast. Yeah. Hey, hey, swinging my dick on stage yeah. today. Yeah. So this is what we do, though. Yeah, but they, yeah, some people don't. I mean, I think you, you got to really have somebody that gets it. Yeah. And obviously, you got with somebody that got it. I think for me, that's the one thing I've been thinking about during the pandemic or the a lockdown or yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I've been thinking about that. Like, I have to be aware that the person has to be comfortable with my lifestyle. And mm -hmm. it's not like my lifestyle is like, it's not like I'm sex trafficking mm -hmm. like Korean businessmen. Right. <laughs> Which, you know, it's good money. Right. <laughs> but that's just, but that's it. I mean, don't, I'm not mad at the people who do that. No, but uh, I'm just saying for me, though, that was the one thing I realized. I've been, you know, you talk to people online. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And then when they say, so when this all stops, you're going to go back to just working on the road? We're like, hell yeah. Right. 
Get him now, ladies. Get him now, ladies. While he got the time, yeah, he's chilling. These Zoom shows, you better get his ass. You better now. get me on the Zoom show. <laughs> nah, man. But uh, like comedy wise, like for me, since the whole thing shut down, I've been very lucky. Yeah, I've been lucky. The shit is, I had. Uh, you know what? Old school comics. I learned from old school comics like uh, John Witherspoon. Yeah. For the people that don't know who John Witherspoon is, um, it's pops to my pops, generation. Yeah, right. It's pops. Um, if you send the movie Boomerang. Yeah. Yeah. He said, bang, 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 <laughs> yeah, bang, yeah, bang. Yeah. That's him. And um, he would tell me, him, Dick Gregory always cussed me out and tell me what to do. And yeah. tell me, you know, because he, he's a real aggressive dude. Yeah. Like, but I learned from him. And he would tell me, if you had a gig for $100, you really got a, hundred, a gig for $75. Mm. So every gig I did, I would take like $25 or $35 off the top and I'd put it away mm. constantly. So by the time some shit went left on me, because a couple things did go left, mm-hmm. I had I had loot in the bank from yeah. just gigging and gigging and gigging. And then last year, uh, 2019, I had a rough year because I had sepsis. Mm. I almost passed away. Damn. Yeah, like crazy. That was my next question. Like, what was your like, most difficult? You oh, know, that really? I was coming. I was waiting for you. Was about to go there. You was and then already I went there. there right. And then, then <laughs> now we here, right here, because you the dude asking the dude about the questions about the dude. Um, Bam. No, yeah. No. Uh, I I I was sitting out January. So what is it? What is it? Sepsis. Sepsis. Explain I, to I, that. Yeah, what I that had, is? Uh, well, it was from my kidney stones. I gotcha. was sitting at my desk, literally setting up promos for a show. Right. And I was really happy that day because, I, for some reason, I got a spike in my. Um, my Instagram, like my numbers went up out of mm. blue. I don't know what happened. Mm. Like, you know, you post one thing and all of a sudden, yeah, right? Yeah. So I did that. I was sitting there, my side started hurting. I'm like, okay, I'm good. Then I start throwing up. I go, okay, probably something I ate. And then, uh, you know, when you start throwing up blood, you go, wait a minute, this ain't right. Something more to this. Yeah, th- yeah. So <laughs> my dumb ass tried to drive to the host hospital because I'm thinking, this is the dumbest shit men do. Well, I'm a man. Right. And it ain't nothing but blood. Right. And I'm going to drive myself because I'm a man. I ain't right. calling nobody. Fill out the forms. Yeah, I'm going right. to fill out the forms because I'm a man, right? right? So I drive myself. I stop about 10 times this puke. I'm puking out of the car. Damn. I, I passed out at Kaiser. I'm passed out right when I was about to drive into the emergency. And uh, that's the last thing I remember seeing the emergency sign. And my car coasted into the park, into... The lobby yeah. and banged off the window where the lady admits Damn. you. Damn. And I didn't hit anything because the doors automatically open up. So you uh, literally entered the. <laughs> yeah, it was crazy. And, and then wow. uh, I woke up and uh, the doctor was like, yeah, my eyes were jaundiced. And he says, he's like, yeah, another hour you'd have been gone. Damn. I was like, is that the shit you go? That's your bedside manner, motherfucker. You supposed to say you can make it rock. Right. You can get through this. You creepy pet cemetery. Another hour, you'd have been dead. It's yeah, like, yo, shit. pet cemetery ass right, doctor. Right. So, um, but then he gave me more fluids, and then I woke up. This is the creepy part of it. I don't know what this dude does. I go back. They give me all this shit to go to sleep. I wake up, and it's like gotta be six in the morning, and he's standing over me. So that's the first face I see. He's still standing over me. He says, "Oh, you look better." I mean, we're going to pump you through all the fluids. I'm going to give you some things. So, yeah. So, I, I like, all last uh, January 19, uh, January 2019, mm-hmm. I was sick off and on until I got surgery October. Damn, that's a long, got, that's yeah, a long time. Yeah, because they were trying to use everything but surgery. Gotcha. And then I got this. And, and I was going on the road taking tons of painkillers. Damn. So, I would literally be on on stage high as giraffe pussy. Damn. Just, just <laughs> trying just to get through it. Get through the set. Damn. But I think because I've been doing it so long, I still did my set, but I was in pain. But Damn. the, the painkillers, the laudanum and Vicodin are amazing. <laughs> yeah, they work. Good yeah, reviews. shit, like colors are brighter. Damn. You see episodes of shows that never were filmed. It Damn. was just, It was just amazing. So um, I got the surgery. The first surgery was fucked up. The second surgery, great. I felt like night and day. Nice. Night and day. So I got wow. that. And then, but I was still doing gigs the whole time. Wow. And um, it was weird. That was one of the worst things. But, but I, so my mind was normal. I wasn't like panicked because I don't, like about like death, mm-hmm. 
I don't get freaked out. I know that's weird. Like everything else, little shit will make me crazy. Oh, you just gonna pull in my parking space? Right. I'm gonna kill everybody in this bitch. <laughs> yeah. But like near but, death experience. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Right, you yeah. know it happens. <laughs> yeah. I really. My, I think it's because my pops. My pops is the type of dude. Was the, was the type of dude. He did now. Mm-hmm. My pops is the kind of dude. That's like, hey, everybody dies. That's right. how he used to like. Everybody dies. You're <laughs> yeah. gonna die. I die. You die. Right. We all die. Right. Very like didn't give a fuck. And I'll give you an example. He when he was about to, you know, he's about to go. We out gambling. He loved gambling. He mm. gambled his ass off. He would put, I don't know if you know, they have in in uh, Atlantic City, they have the coins that are twenty five dollar coins. Yeah. He would be four, four and five at a time. Like the chips that you no, gamble with, or the, actually the, like a coin. The, yeah, there's coins you could buy. Damn, I didn't know that. And he would do it twenty five dollars a pop. Damn. And he would do five and six, and Damn. do you know where seven and eight. Damn, and, and it's it. back in the day too. So I, that's twenty five dollars. No, lot. he would kill it. And <laughs> so we out gambling. He said, ah, "My my head hurts." I'm like, "How long your head been hurting?" Ah, about two, three months. I'm like, <laughs> Fuck is wrong with you? What? So I would take him to the doctor. They said he had brain cancer. Wow. They, and the doctor said, "You got about a month." Wow. So get your affairs in order. And I'm wow. since I'm right there with him. He said, "Well, I guess I got to get back down to the casino." Wow. Didn't no sadness, no like, oh, fuck it, right. I'm gonna die. And I think I learned that from him because he wow. just had just this nonchalant. Wow. And he said, and he really said that. And then um, we at the hospital. Was, so my brothers want to beat him up. Um, <laughs> he he said, uh, I asked him what you want me to do pertaining to your arrangements. He right. said, I just cremate me and uh, and throw my ashes over Atlantic City Boardwalk because I loved gambling more than I loved your mother and you kids. Oh, shit. And I was like, part of me was like, thought it was funny. <laughs> right. But part of me was like, well, at least, I mean, Seems why do you need to lie right. about the shit now? Right. My brother wanted to blast him in the fucking chest. Damn. Right? But we end up doing this. Sounds like a movie. It's real shit. We all drive down there. My son Cameron, by the time he's older, so mm-hmm. it's me, Cameron, my brother's... Uh, my uncle Phoebe, we drive into Atlantic City Boardwalk. We go down there, we take the ashes, we throw them in the air over the thing. Yeah. Fuck if the wind didn't blow. Damn. Blew it all over us. All in your face. Right? <laughs> and my uncle Phoebe, I wish I'd have came up with this line. My <laughs> uncle Phoebe said, We cannot get rid of this nigga. <laughs> yeah. He will not go away. Damn. And so um, it was. Y'all just, couldn't even laugh about that shit. Oh, we start dying. <laughs> We're all covered. We drive back to the house and we're gelling all these horrible jokes. Wow. Cause he's he did horrible shit. Right. I mean I dug him, right. but he was kinda horrible. Right. right. He peed on my sister. Wow. You don't realize a lot of that yeah. shit when you're going through it, but years later oh, yeah, you look yeah. back and it's like, wait, wait a minute. Yeah, wait, what he, the fuck are we going yeah, through there? Pee on, yeah. Right. He got he won two hundred thousand dollars on the Super Bowl, came in drunk. Two hundred thousand? Two hundred thousand dollars on the Super Bowl, came in drunk, pulled his dick out, peed all over the place. Sister's in the crib, what? pee on her, pee on everything. <laughs> what? Mom sees him, smashes him in the head with a lamp. He picks all the money up, goes back out, loses it all. What? Did not, was not upset at all. I asked wow. him about it once. He said, yeah, that's part of gambling. Damn. Like, he didn't even, Damn. like, nothing, man, I would have been like, right. how did you have found me on a bridge going, hey, you know what, I, <laughs> Cameron, I love you. Uh, 200000 I, I would have been like, I would have cut my wrist and thrown myself Damn, off a bridge. just to be sure. <laughs> just to make sure that Damn. I did. Yeah, man. That sounds like a, a bomb-ass Netflix movie, though, on the world. It's like this whole concept. Ran, dude. Wow. I seen him drop, no bullshit, 30000 and Damn. I look, and I'm sitting there going like this, and never helped none of us. Wow. It wasn't like he ever, because he felt like it's my money. Right. This ain't your money. I made right. the money. I can do what I want to do. Do with what it. I want with it's the, the money. Old so it was never that. Too. So yeah. I, after a while, I never asked him because I knew he wanted, he's going to just say no. Right. I'm not going to give you this money. So, and I think that that fueled my comedy thing when I would get rejected by bookings. Yep. I got a movie that was written for me, booked it, and then they. Pick somebody else because I wasn't famous enough. Wow. And took me out of the movie. Wow. And people were like, are you mad? I'm like, no. Why? That wasn't my path. That wasn't my... Damn. And I, I think if I wouldn't be like that if it wasn't for my pops. Damn it. You did it again. My next question was... What? What motivates you the most? What really keeps you going? Because again, 29 years, G... You know, you didn't yeah, have doors slammed in your face. You didn't have those, you know oh, what I'm saying? Lost face. opportunities. So how do you stay motivated throughout all of this change and all of these things happening I, at you? But say, look, he getting all deep. There it is. Like, <laughs> so what is it? 
<laughs> that, that keeps you going. Shoot with this <laughs> Nah, man. I cause uh, the general public. I mean, I've been on the road with probably a lot of comics that we were supposed to do the taping with. Yeah. And um, it, I see how the general public treats me and mm. the numbers. Like when you're on a show with somebody and you know that they got they've been on a show. Like I'm on shows with Netflix comics, and I haven't. I got I've got clips on Netflix, but I've never done a Netflix special. Right. And they have to open for me. That's mm. when I realized, no, I can keep doing this. Right. Not be, and or where I see that they draw, but I draw as much as they draw. Mm -hmm. And then that made me go, well, the times when I feel bad, I go, yeah, but a lot of people come to see me and they seem to like what I'm doing and they've been following me for a long time. It's the trippiest shit. I was doing Zanies in Chicago. Mm -hmm. uh, I was doing a set. Some dude came with, he was an older cat, and then he, his son brought his son and his son's son. Hey, hella shit. generations up there. Trippy. <laughs> and he said, this is my son. And that's his son. That's my grandson. Mm -hmm. And he said he had been watching me since I started. Damn. And he told me two of my jokes from one of my early sets. Damn. And I'm talking about, I was maybe, when I did that joke, I had that joke then. I was maybe three years in. Wow. So he... He saw the evolution. And he was like, <laughs> I brought my son, and now my son watches you. Damn. And my son's son, he said from, because uh, I used to be a regular on um, Comic View. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, That's what I was used to do. Yeah, yeah. That comedy. was my joint. That's when I fell I did, in love yeah. with the game. I did, like, nine times. I remember you had the, had the shit on. I used to, no, I still, I still yeah, get yeah. him. Yeah, right now, because I got a big nappy throat. <laughs> no, I had dreads. Yeah. I had dreads. And uh, the people, the, one of the people at BET didn't like my dreads. Because mm. I didn't have nice dreads. Yeah, long ass dreads. I had really, yeah. yeah. And my dreads, but they weren't, they weren't um, nice dreads. They were mm. Nazis, mm -hmm. like Nazi dread. Where, mm -hmm. One big one, one mad at one. It was like, <laughs> yeah. It, yeah, it was not, it, it wasn't cute. Yeah. And so the lady said, um, she said, well, you need to cover that up. That's nasty. Wow. I was like, first off, that's some rude shit to right. say. But she said, you need to cover it up. And they went and got me a hat. Uh, I didn't, I wasn't wearing a that hat. That wasn't even your hat. Yeah, it was just, they she said, can you wrap those up? Uh, and, like, and like real dis disgust with, disgusted with me. And then I had a really big beard. Mm -hmm. I had a full beard. And she said, you need to shave that off. That don't look good for TV. Mm -hmm. And my, my attitude at the time was like, first I was like, going to cuss her out. Like, fuck you. Right. Who you talking to? <laughs> right. And then I turned to a friend of mine. He said, hey, man, it's a beard. It'll grow back. I right. went, you're right. Right. So when I shaved it, it was wild. Uh, they saw me and didn't realize it was still me. Because mm. look, I had looked so different. And I hadn't seen myself without a beard in so long. It was weird, but I did the show. I had a good set. And then the second time, they were like, oh, you should wear the hats. And then I cut my hair. I cut my hair like after that for a part. Got the part, did the thing, thought I was going to be all the way through the movie, end up being in the movie for three minutes. Damn. And I was like, damn, I cut my hair for this For this shit. three minutes. Yeah. And I, but I kept them in a bag. I had them for years. I had my dreads in a bag. <laughs> in a bag, I kept it in my kitchen in a big bag because I thought... That's a long time of right, growth. Right. Yeah, but yeah, I got rejected there. I got um well, you know, the late show I got I did the late show. That was cool. Oh, tight. Yeah, I got now, my next question. The late you show. you own it tonight. See? You own it. I'm just letting <laughs> you, you know it. that I know that you know. So and they know <laughs> that I know. And we we in sync. Y'all can't sync. see. He's watching the thing <laughs> right now, watching it. No, but yeah. But your greatest accomplishment. You've you Dick Gregory, Palmer, you mean all of these comic Kevin I'm Hart, sorry. Cat Miss, Williams. I'm Mr. Mooney. Yo, uh, <laughs> there he is. <laughs> he used to always tell me that, like, it's Mr. Mooney, nigga. Your coolest night. I mean, your your your, your most epic night of comedy. Most epic yeah, I mean, night. you've you've performed with everybody. So what would you say? No, looking no, back, I got people on the list. That you still looking forward to? Eddie to? Murphy. Oh shit. Yeah. Eddie Murphy. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, Damon Williams. Oh yeah, Damon. I like. I I think Damon Williams is funny as fuck. Yeah, yeah. He out of Chicago too. Uh, yeah, Chicago he? too, ain't it? I, I don't know. Yeah, shout out to Damon Williams. Yeah, but Damon yeah. Williams is funny. Yeah, uh, yeah. Not, not, no, not that Damon Williams. Damon Wayans. Wayans. Oh, Williams. yeah. I like Him Damon too. Williams. Yeah. Damon, Damon Wayans. Damon Wayans, yeah. I don't yeah. believe. Well, I like Damon Williams, but I like Damon mm. Wayans. Right, right. It's just hilarious to me. Right. And um, I would love to be on a show with him. I've never been on a show. I met him and talked with him and had right. conversations, but never performed with him. Gotcha. But my biggest accomplishment would probably be winning BET. They had, used to have to be a contest. Mm hmm. There was BET Comic View contest, and people would call in, and whoever got the most calls would get a half hour special, and they would only shoot four of them, nice. and I won two of them. Nice. So the, I would say that one, 
uh, the Late Show. Though that was good. I didn't even audition. What they did was the producer was driving to work and heard me on um, XM Radio comedy, wow. and then he hit me up directly. Said, "Can you do this set clean?" Because it wasn't clean on the show. Hell no. I was like, "Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I got. I, I, yeah, I can do that." I went and did a set at the Ice House. As a comedy club, mm -hmm. and then I did a set, and then um, I sent it to him. It was all clean, and he like immediately, like three days later, yeah. And he was like, "Yeah, that's exactly what." And I was on the show. Nice. So I, that one, uh, Comedy Central was cool. Uh, a show called uh, Laugh a Palooza. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember uh, like, was that Jamie Foxx? Jamie Foxx. Fox. Oh shit, yeah. Jamie Foxx. Legendary. That shit was dope. Yeah. Um, but I say Def Jam would be one of the top. And my hour special. This nigga got a lot of credentials down there, man. That's my I, yeah, yeah. Like, I don't know. Let me get my catalog. Let me see which one. Comedy Central. I think that's uh, uh, I, my most, uh, I'd say Avengers, Avengers 2 was my top thing. I don't right. know if y'all can tell in the back. I was one of the uh, one right. of the uh, villains. So was, no. Uh, you got no, a catalog, man. That's yeah, dope. no. I mean, yeah, my hour special, Shangri. Um, but the, the coolest thing was my first album, Doing Well. Nice. But I, people didn't realize I had been doing it for so long. Right. By the time I got an album, it was so cool. Back in the day, they used to have this thing called Tower Records. Mm. A lot of people don't know about that. But the people that do know will know. Tower Records. And in New York, it was huge. It was huge. And it was all the way down Broadway. And it was the most trippy thing to go in to see my album. Mm. I was I went to buy one of my own albums because I wanted to just see it in Go the, through the process, right? right look right. at it in the thing <laughs> and it'd be all these other comments like Steve Martin's right there. And I'm in the S's and Shang and Steve Martin. I'm like in my <laughs> mind. And it's so cool. This African dude, this two African dudes situation. The African dude was buying my album. When I was there Damn. to buy my album. Damn. And I was like, oh this shit. And he said, Wait, you that's you. <laughs> and that was a trippy shit. Yeah. And then uh well, that's fine. And, I, and then to be able, and I still have the photos, to drive down Broadway and you see R. Kelly and these big banners that they hold, that hung off of the outside of the building. Yeah. And to see R. Kelly and then my my album cover and then that, that was oh, so trippy. Tight, tight. And then uh, another time I said, African dude, you know how they bootlegged on the street and you, oh, people yeah. coming by. I saw somebody had bootlegged my album. <laughs> With and the bootleg I, DVDs and all of that? Yeah, but yeah, there was the a bunch CD? of bootlegs yeah, yeah. of my shit. And I, the dude got scared because at first when I walked up on him, I looked and said, is that my shit? <laughs> and he thought I was mad and I wasn't mad. I was right. more like, oh, I, somebody thought I was right. valuable enough to bootleg right. me. And I bought one. Dope. I said, hey man, how much he said? Well, it's you though, I'll give it to you. He said, no, no. <laughs> he gave it for $5, I bought my own. And they, you could see they just did a copy cover. Right. It was a fucked up Xerox copy cover. Yeah. And it was nothing probably on it. Probably at Kinko's. Yeah, 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 probably Kinko's. <laughs> and he wrote on there with marker, marker Shangri. Wow. And I was like, I bought the shit. And that's, that's when tight. I was like, maybe I'm making a dent in this shit. And tight. then, uh, I, you know, I, I, I'd say that that was out of the three. Because some, some about that, I was like, because I would think, do they actually thought I was valuable enough to bootleg me? To, that's, to actually, that's how you know you certified, man. When the streets yeah, come after you, man. Yeah, that was some trippy shit. <laughs> I was like, this is amazing. But, but you are making a dent, man. You're making a difference, man. You're inspiring other comics that come up behind you like yeah. myself, man. So I got nothing but respect for what you've done and what you've accomplished and what you're going to accomplish, man. Right. So uh, and, and also, man, you, you know, you, you're an activist, too, the way you speak out and stand up for what's kind of going on, man. Yeah. So please, man, as we get ready to conclude, man, talk to us about your podcast and yeah. where, they can, where they can find you at, man. What you got? Going on. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, first off, everybody listens to this goddamn podcast. Y'all <laughs> listen to me. Make sure you follow me on Instagram. Don't mess around. Uh, at Comedian Shang. And my website is IamShang.com. And you see, you can see the special on my website. You can see it's Shangri. You can see a clip of, a clip of it. You can't get the shit for free. Got to find a bootleg man. But get the bootleg dude. <laughs> the African dude. But no, um, uh, my, my, uh, the podcast we got is called Savage AF. Nice. And it's... Uh, it's a political podcast, so people always tune in to hear a lot of jokes, and they're like, "Oh shit, they're talking about it's real shit going real on shit. over here." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but we we figured we haven't heard a, a a talk show where it was people that talk like people really talk in the streets right. about the shit that's going on right. in government and stuff, and it's an easier way for people from the hood to digest you know, all that. To that digest all yeah. that when you you it's in plain speak. So Savage AF is on all, all of the, you know, the same platforms you're going to be on. Facts. But it's in the political section. 
Cool. It's not in the comedy section. So Savage AF, we're doing pretty good. We get about, uh, and we do also do it on IG Live. Nice. So they can see it like it's from six to seven. We do it on IG Live and people comment and can pop in and say stuff. So um, we get about maybe like, we average about 2,000 people oh, will come in, which is oh. crazy. No, I don't know why. Wow. Because at first we had like six people right. on the live. And yeah, then that's about where I'm at. And I just click off. I just be like, you know what? Yeah, this Fuck is, this yeah. live. Let me get up out of here. Y'all I don't need with to me. be put down on live. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> so no, I w so it's just weird. It was six people at first. Then we'd see 18 people like, oh shit, 18 people watching right. us. And then it just started growing, and I use IGTV because oh, yeah. I think that's the future. And yep. I'm gonna be trying to do some stuff with Quibi. Oh yeah, Quibi TV. Yeah, yeah. Quibi. So um, that that coming up. But I'd say right now the the election is is what we're doing is I'm doing where you sell stuff, mm -hmm. but instead of them paying, they have to show me they're registered to vote. Mm. If they show a me you register to vote, I'll send you a download of my thing. Mm. So, but you gotta be registered, and I try to get as many people to register vote, cause even though I know people say, it's, you know, it's corny and it sounds like it's a uh, cliche, this really is the most important election. It is, really. The dude that's running the shit right now is right. certifiably out of his fucking mind. Right, proving Not he's that, unfit. Yeah, right. he's, he's right. out of his mind, and yeah. if somebody get mad about the podcast, like, yeah, man, I watched that podcast, and you said that my president, shut the fuck up. <laughs> Yeah. You know he's a, he's right. out of his mind. They corrupt his shit. The GOP's corrupt his shit. I'm not saying Biden is the best. He's kind of right. shaky, but he's. Right. I mean, Literally. what would you rather? Yeah, would you rather somebody <laughs> smack you in the face or or like smack you in the face than bend you over a pool table and rape you? Right. There is a false equivalency saying that this person and Kamala is as bad as Trump right. and Pence. That private dancer, you know he's. Right. You right. know, yeah, he's so. You could tell he's a. Gay man want to bust out so bad. Yeah, looks not like, yet. Not yeah, yet. He yeah, don't wait till after he's out of the office. After he's out of office, he's going to be all over the place. He's going to be throwing glitter up in the air. I was the vice president. Ooh. But no, he's just such. He's sucking the taint of Trump so much. Everything mm -hmm. Trump say, he say. Oh, yeah. Get a fucking spy on you, bitch. Yeah. But I, I just think that, um, you know, I wanted to do that because I would listen to some of the stuff on MSNBC and I wouldn't. They wouldn't call a liar a liar. Right. They go with mistruths. Right. And so we were like, we want to show where it's like, that motherfucker lied his ass off. <laughs> right. And then we noticed people would respond that right. way because they go, yeah, he did lie. Right. Mistruths and avoided the truth. Right. What the fuck? He right. lied. You didn't have a bigger audience. He said, I had a bigger audience than Obama did at my inauguration. Mm -hmm. And we had photos. So that's when we first started it. When he first, like started doing stuff like that, and we noticed people would respond going, "Yeah, that's exactly how I feel. Fuck him." Right. So we, there it is. Yeah, and but we wouldn't. But then we noticed the show got more because there's so much serious shit going on. Right. We didn't do as many jokes. Now, if somebody comes to see me do stand up, I'm still going full. I I will definitely do a pussy joke or two. Right. Right. But on the show, no, we we primarily. That's what's up, man. Dope. So, yeah. Dope, man. Brand, I'm so glad you came through and spent yeah. some time with me. Yeah. Learn more about your history, man. Getting, I'm getting I'm getting lit. He getting lit over here. He getting he getting his ass hydrated. I ain't got no blood for your ass. Yo, I've been your host, <laughs> Charlie Wilson TV. Thank y'all so much for tuning in to Do Tell with Laugh After Dark. I'll see y'all next time. Look, look at y'all out here tuning in. Okay. Okay. No, hey, thank you for tuning in. You make sure you continue to tune in. Tell your friends, your baby mama, your baby. I, 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 tell him too. Make sure y'all like, follow, subscribe, support, all things do tell. I've been your host, Charlie Wilson. I'm here with Laugh After Dark, baby. You know how we do it.